So we're back at Santa Pod and that can only mean one thing. It is the FIA European Finals. to be honest with you. Top fuel drag, she was nearly sewn up in favour of Duncan Mickleth, but however, anti Horto still in with the shout. Promod's gone to Mickey Goldfist and we've got so much more than that to see. Well, with no further ado, let's get down to it. So we kick off with Pro Stock, Beck Jungdahl and Stefan Enrud. Beck Jungdahl far side the racetrack, Stefan Enrud near side. And this weekend it would be Stefan Enrud at the number one spot, 667 at 207 miles an hour. The weather played a massive part in this weekend. Only one qualifying run for everybody, unfortunately. And uh, this following on from their Titanic final round. So Stefan, Hockenheim. last time we saw you in Hockenheim, you were having a little bit of a moment. Tell us how that went. Well, it was kind of a scary thing. Um, what happened just before the finish line, I just saw the blue camera just in front of me. Uh, the good thing, it was just before the finish line, so I just had my hand off my handle to pull the chutes. And on any pro stock car, it's very difficult in that speed because we got so little down downforce. So uh, the car just went straight to the right and started to slide. On to qualifying for ProMod, no big surprise to see Jimmy Orland in there at number one with a 5.97. And again, one shot qualifiers for the ProMods, that was an outstanding performance. The only problem this time is that usually you meet the slowest car in the field and he broke. So we got to meet the first, first reserve, which is Roger Johansson. And you know how that is, he's not supposed to be outside the field to start with. Top methanol class combined dragsters and funny cars for this year. However, it's still the Harverman boys at the top of the pile. Number one was Timo, very closely followed by his brother Dennis. Vinci Championship, um, number one qualifier. Dennis is number two qualifier. Um, we worked for it pretty hard, you know. We, we did all the season this year. And yeah, it's just nice to be here again on, on the top. And now our plan is to win the race. Top fuel battle has come down to these two as well. Far side, Duncan Mickleff, near side, Anti Horto. This one goes to Anti Horto, and he was the number one qualifier. He's got a great outside shot of taking the title this weekend. Number one now, one, one round, and uh, we make a 4 0, but uh, it was enough, so it's a good, good start for a race day. I think we need to improve to go to the three this day to win this race. So the matchup that Jimmy Orland mentioned is the one coming up right now. These are highlights from round one of FIA Pro Mod, the round of 16. Always a bit tough and nervy on Sunday morning, especially considering they only had one qualifying run where everybody managed to get into the show. Jimmy Orland was number one qualifier. Roger Johansson was actually outside the field. However, due to breakage, Roger made it to the line in round one to take on Jimmy. Both these cars are normally very evenly matched. Roger really shouldn't have been a DNQ. However, that's just the way it goes when qualifying is shortened by the weather. And Jimmy has a much more difficult matchup in round one than you would normally expect. However, 
no mistake on the Christmas tree and at the finish line too. 5.93 for Jimmy Orland. Still a great 6.00 for Roger Hansen. So good to see him back last year. Since last year. So good to see him back after his accident last year at Santa Pod. Up next, we've got Mark Hartbelt taking on Norbert Kuno. Mark with the Voodoo Heavy Bay making big, big strides down into the six zeros in Hockenheim, as was Norbert Kuno for the first time ever, ran a personal best, 6.03. However, it was on a red light. Well, no mistake from Norbert this time. The car leaves well out towards the wall, but Mark Hartbelt runs him down and out runs him too. 6.10, 2.33. Norbert kicked it off a little bit early to a 6.41. So Bruno Barda against the UK's Bert Engelke with the hot rod. You can tell why it's called a hot rod. They're all hot rods, really, for looking at. Uh, Bruno Barda has had a pretty horrible year. It started badly and I don't really think get much better after that. He broke a brand new engine combination in testing first of the year and uh, it's just been one struggle after another for Bruno however hopes to turn his season around a little bit with a good performance here at the finals taking on Bert here in round one well surprise Bruno spins the tyres off the start line Bert's out in front of Bert takes the win by oh my goodness me just that much 6-2-0 takes out a 6-28 that was one hell of a race On to the kings of the sport, top fuel drags to round number one, the round of eight. India Rohrbacher, fresh off her fabulous debut performance out in Germany at the Hockenheim ring. She got to the final, but got beaten by the man who is now in the other lane again. Duncan Mikulev. Now, Duncan can actually sew up the top fuel title by beating India. India would like nothing more than to get revenge on the man from Malta right now. All on the line, round one top fuel. It's India away first, and India's out in front by half a car length, but smokes the tyres all over for her. And Duncan is your 2017 European top fuel champion. 3.15 at 304 miles an hour. The conditions were very, very challenging for every race car here over the weekend, let alone the top fuel cars. It's quite cold, they like, normally like a little bit more track temperature as the next pair come round. The Barco Tools Express from Sweden, Mickey Kagarad taking on in her first ever race in a top fuel dragster, Maya Utian from Norway. Now Maya is the daughter of Paul Inger Utian, one of the most famous European racers of all time really. Uh, the Islanders team are legendary in European drag racing, however, Unfortunately for her, she's not going to make it to the start line. Problem with the car, it's going to be Mickey Gagarad taking a solo run. And all Mickey does is launch the car just to make sure of taking the wind lights and give the team a little more service time before the semi-final. So Mickey Gagarad moves on in that pair. Well, Antti Horto now knows that he won't have a chance of winning the championship because Duncan's already sewn it up. However, still wants to go out with the bang and win the race. He ran his first ever three-second elapsed time here back in May. Looking to go a little bit further in the elimination that we got that weekend. Taking on Stefan Gunnarsson from Sweden on the far side with a BSG racing car from Sweden. Lots of potential in that car as well. Well, Antti smokes the tyres and, oh my goodness me, that was huge for Stefan Gunnarsson. He's going to take the win because Antti smoked the tyres off the start line and stopped almost instantly. Stefan pedalled the car, got on and off the throttle. However, the engine filled up with fuel and it blew the blower clean off the top of the motor. The fire crew there on the scene pretty much straight away. He's taken the round win, however, Sure, the team would be a little bit subdued because they've got awful lot of work to get that car ready for the semi finals.
So the last pair round, we're all set for our semi-finals, apart from one of these two. For Lucas Oil and Denmark, in the Iron Storm car, Stig Nergaard, and against Anita Mekula from Finland. Now these two, when I was one and two in the championship last year, it all came down to the finals. However, both of them nowhere near, unfortunately for them, this year round. They've had nightmare seasons. I have to say as well, not as much of a nightmare as poor old Liam Jones from the UK, who in the one-shot qualifying didn't get in the show at his home race as well. Anita or Stig? Well, Stig shakes the tyres, pedals it, goes towards the centre line. Anita backs out of it a little bit early. But again, most importantly, gets that all-important win light. It's only a second of the entire 2017 season. So we're here on the start line with Tommy Michaela. So you just watched Anita run. How was that? Uh, it, not, it was not nice, but it was win. <laughs> that's a, the that's a most important thing. <laughs> so this, this season you were having a few struggles. Is it good to see her get round to the second round this, this time? I don't know what you ask it, but we are very happy with that win and we're going to win this race. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, sorry. And hello to Hannah to home. <laughs> Promod's second round. We had some fabulous races as you saw in the highlights earlier from round one. This one is going to be an all Dutch matchup. David Vector taking on the ever improving Mark Hartbell with the Voodoo Hemi. Both of these two have the potential to run. More than likely in the fights, really. Mark Hartbelt is nearly there. David Beggs has been there a few times recently as well this year. Neither of them have done it so far this weekend, but now would be a good time. David had an up and down season, really. Really good first three races, but then hasn't won a round of racing. Uh, didn't win one in Hockenheim, didn't win one in Tiep. So the round winning round one was his first for a long while. So taking on Mark Hartbelt. At the moment, Mark is the one actually from the first round with the performance advantage. So they're both in, and Mark Hartbelt goes before the green light comes on. A little bit out of shape, but he stays with it. David Vector with the 656, early shut off 656, I might add, actually goes through and takes the win. Freddie Fagerstrom taking on Jimmy Orland. Both these two have been jesting with each other over the summer. This is Jimmy's first season in a Pro Mod car. What, well, post Pro season? He did actually start out in Pro Mod many years ago, but he's been mostly in post off, dominating post off for some time. Taking on one of the greatest entertainers in the whole drag racing world. Freddie Fagerstrom, far side of the racetrack. Jimmy got a car length at 3.30, got a couple of car lengths through the finish line. 6.02 takes out Freddie's real good try at 6.23. It's always going to be difficult to beat uh, an aerodynamic car with a barn door, but we love Freddie for trying. All Camaros next, blue or red? Take your pick from the UK on the far side with a red NGK anger management car. That's Andy Robinson. Built the car, races the car, and a uh, pretty good job of tuning it as well, along with his son Luke and the whole crew really are a class act. Leading the MSA Championship up against Mickey Goldquist from Sweden. He is the repeat champion. Both away together and they're dead even, but something goes wrong for Andy Robinson. No mistake for Mickey G. That's why he wears the number one. 597 once again for that killer blue Camaro. Bert Engelville fresh from that brilliant first round win over Bruno Bada with Hot Rod against Kim Christensen, the man from Denmark with the Pontiac. This car previously owned by Mark Mayhausen. However, Kim really, really making it his own. Some fantastic low six second runs. Here he is in the second round, his first ever trip to Sandsford Raceway to run in Pro Modified and so far it's going very, very well indeed. However, tough customer is Bert been around this place a long, long time and knows how to get round wheels. Well, Bert's actually out in front and he's still there at half track, but the speed at the top end of the Pontiac makes it 
pay. 6.12 takes out a 6.22 and he broke a header. That's what the sparks went through the finish line. Pro Stock quarterfinals. The factory hot rods, the uh, manufacturer's class in door car racing. Simon Gustafsson. That's pretty much actually a nostalgia pro stock car. It's an old, 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 I say 15 years old, Dodge Avenger out there. Owned by Michael Sherquist. That's Michael out front directing Simon into stage. Simon's a really good, young, capable driver, but they've had a horrible season with all kinds of engine damage. Taking on Magnus Pedersen. Great to see Magnus back here at Santa Pop with the GTO. Has the horsepower to run really good elapsed times and nearly won the championship just a couple of years ago. Simon Gustafsson, though, with a visible hole shot off the start line. Can he hold it all the way to the finish line? The answer is just and yes. 687 takes out a 677. Through to round two. Well, this is a big one in the chase for the championship. That lad there, Robin Noren, the young man from Sweden with the white Pontiac, taking on Bengt Jungdahl with the blue Camaro. Now, Bengt looked like he was going to be running away with the championship, but a couple of hiccups at the last two races have really swayed things back towards Stefan Enrud. Uh, the near crash in Hockenheim as well really didn't help. And Bengt Jungdahl needs to beat Robin Noren right now to make sure of his championship chances. So, Robin Noren's biggest fan at the moment is Stefan Enrud. However, you can see on board with Bengt Jungdahl, absolutely no mistakes at all. A couple of car links at the finish line and low elapsed time of the weekend so far for a 6.63. Great effort, though, for Robin Noren. 6.78, his first full year on the Pro Stock Tour, and they've really done themselves proud. Michael Malgren taking on Thomas Lindstrom. Great to see Thomas back here at Santa Pod. Another team that have been played a little by some breakage throughout 2017. Uh, Mickey Malgren took his turn last year. Uh, he had a horrible end to the season, um, unfortunately. And he's going to have a horrible end to this one as well. The car being pushed away off the start line. Thomas Lindstrom gets a freebie into the semi-finals. Not that he normally leads it, runs it all out the back door anyway, into the six sevens. So we have one more car to make up the semi-finals in the FIA Pro Stock, and it's Stefan Enrud. Number one qualifier, had just such a great second season with this car. Sponsored by Daiko by Belgetti, and uh, normally it's not good luck to paint your car green. However, it's been nothing but good luck for Stefan this summer. First win in Nock, and I might will never forget. Looking for a quick elapsed time to take lane choice for the semi. Goes 6.67, not only for a pro stocker, 202 miles an hour. Good enough, though, to set up our semi-finals in pro stock. So we're on to top methanol quarter-finals. The car we're used to seeing driven by Danny Bellio. He still says Danny's on the front of it. Uh, it's his son, Sandro, in there, and Sandro is just doing a fantastic job of driving so far in 2017. Got his licence back at the main event, went to his first ever event a few weeks later in TF and won the race. Back there again at the end of August, and he won it again, taking on Johnny Lag from Sweden with the dragster. The way it works out with uh, top methanol between the two cars is the funny car gets a slight head start. There they go. And there goes Johnny Lag trying to run him down with a big A fuel car, and it looks like he's going to do just that. Sandro Bellia was way out in front there for some time. However, Johnny's 546 at 264 miles an hour ran him down a treat. Next pair with the burnouts, Rod Harrison from the UK. Taking on Dennis Harberman. Hardly anything to choose between Timo and him as drivers or cars, to be honest with you. They've both been quick, deadly consistent as always. That's Dad, Bernard Harberman, going out to back his son up into his burnout tracks. Rod, Kim, Carl, and the whole Harrison team, sponsored by NUA Motors. 
a bit of an up and down 2017. Started not so great for them, however, they changed to a clutch mid-season, went out testing and run some spectacular numbers since. So, Dennis cannot expect to have this all his own way. Rod Harrison will be looking to take the young lad out. He'll still have a big task doing it, however, he's more than up to it. Unfortunately for all of us in England, Rod Harrison goes red on the tree. Dennis takes a well-deserved win. Very nicely done. Down in the mid-fives once again, and the Harbormans are in another semi-final. Up next to be Dennis's brother, Timo. The cars almost look identical. There's only slight paint job differences, and uh, if you kind of know how they look, you can tell the difference between them, but just to just about everybody, they're virtually the same car. Another one of these great dragster versus funny car matchups this time. Both these two from Germany, Jürgen Nagel. The car he built himself, tunes himself, and uh, does a pretty good job of driving it himself as well. You can see the funny car get a 0.26 of a second head start on the start line. Then it's all up to Timo to run the funny car down. Made for some great matchups throughout 2017 with this format. Great way of evening the cars out as well. Some fans favour the dragsters, some the funny cars. Great throwback to the uh, old days of Pro Comp, if you like, where these cars originated from. So Timo's got virtually a lock on the championship this year. I think this race is just going to about to sew it up for him. Jürgen goes first, there we go, followed by Timo. And Timo passed him by a thousand foot. Still great runs for both of them though. Jürgen back into the fives again with a 5.93, but Timo, low laps time of the weekend, 5.40. Pro Mod semi-finals. Replaced to run for the big trophy. David Vector from the Netherlands against Jimmy Orland from Sweden. Now these two, before this weekend, were duking it out for the second position in the championship. Mickey Corpus has got the championship sign up. He will be number one again for 2018. However, if David Vector can win this and win the event, there is a slim possibility he could creep up enough points on Jimmy Orland to take that number two spot. Well, by the looks of it, David's given himself a good chance of that. Problems for Jimmy Allen, bit of tyre shake there. David keeps it nailed to a 6.28, 2.28 to Jimmy's only busted run of the weekend at an 8.0. But uh, I don't think those guys mind at all. King Christiansen from Denmark and Mickey Alquist will be the defending champ again next year. Normally by the time we roll around to September, Mickey gives everybody a little bit of hope. However, he gave them none whatsoever coming here this weekend. I think all he had to do was turn up and stage the car in qualifying, and he was the champion. No matter what he did in eliminations. However, King Christensen looking forward, or looking to try, I should say, to spoil Mickey's championship party. He's won the last two events. He won in Chiep, he won in Hockenheim as well. Cam Christian didn't do anything about it. The answer is no. He double steps off the start line. Mickey Gulkist effectively gets a freebie into the final with another five second run. 5.99. He's unstoppable, that man. So, top methanol semi finals. And we've only got dragsters left today. No funny cars left around to play by the semi-finals. Going to be Johnny Lag with the injected nitro car. The only one here this weekend and the only one that's run all season. Sadly for us, there are a few more about. We hope to see him again in 2018. Dennis with the more traditional, for now, supercharged car. Now up to now, both of these two have been very even. They've both been in the five fours. And they're almost dead even off the start line. We're on board with Dennis, but what you can't see is Johnny Lag 
taking the win with a terrific run. 5.40, his quickest ever elapsed time at 264. Other side of the ladder, Timo Harperman gets a bye run. He's going to go out and test the racetrack and shakes the tyres a little bit off the start line, so wisely backs off. He's going to be the last Harperman standing to try and take out that pesky Johnny Lag who's doing so well this weekend. Pro Stock semi-finals and it's kind of do or die really for Stefan Enrod here with the Daiko car. It's an all Dodge semi-final. The more modern Dodge Dart of Stefan Enrod taking on Simon Gustafsson with the, uh, I think I said earlier, kind of nostalgia Pro Stock. Dodge Avenger there. I think Michael Sherquist, the car owner, will be changing the body on that car. This may well be its last ever event. It's given us so much pleasure over the years, so many quick and fast runs, and when Yari Connell first built it, who ever thought it would be down in the 6.7s as it's now been? So, can Stefan Enrid make another final? Well, they're away dead even, and it looks like Stefan's got a car length already on Simon Gustafsson. The answer is a definite yes, 6.71 at 207. And a nice way to retire the Avenger for Simon Gustafsson in the semi-finals of Pro Stock at Santa Pod. Now, this should have been a race to keep Bent Jungdahl's hopes alive. However, no Thomas Lindstrom, unfortunately, for us. This will be a race. At 6.62, 207 miles an hour. That's what you call a punctuation mark. Low ET of the weekend as well. Top fuel semis. Stefan Gunnison unfortunately couldn't make it back from all the damage. Duncan Mikulev from Malta. All he had to do was launch the car, take the green light. Crew just wanted to check the racetrack out in preparation for the all-important final. And who's he going to be taking on? It will be one of these two. How many times have they raced each other over the years? both in the top alcohol days and in the top fuel days as well. Mickey Kagarad, the Barco Express from Sweden, performing a lot better in the second half of the season, back in the three-second zone at Hockenheim, taking on Anita Merkula. Both of these two could really do with a win here and this weekend as well, just to make their seasons feel a little bit better. Once again, away dead even, tie shake for Mickey Kagarad. And no mistake at all for Anita. Low ET of race day, 4.07, only 241 miles an hour. She was running 2.71 at the eighth. Well, sadly for all the fabulous race fans here at Santa Pod, the very, very hard-working track crew, that was the end of proceedings. We didn't get any more racing in due to the weather after everyone tried so hard. Well, as you can see, the weather finally got the better of us this weekend. Racing. Darryl, what happened with the FIA Championship? Well, the championships all got settled, just unfortunately the event in Duncan Mikulev took the first ever top fuel title back to Malta. Timo Harperman's done it before, he did it again. FIA Pro Stock, Bengt Jungdahl. Um, really great effort from that team all season in FIA Pro Modified. What can you say about Mickey Well, as you can see, the boys behind us have worked tirelessly all weekend to make it happen, but it just wasn't meant to be. Make sure you come back with us next year and let's go racing again.